Okay, <clears throat> today's video we're going to talk about a little bit about asset management. Not, um, it's not something that you we're going to get into. I mean, we're going to go over this and just get you familiar with it so you can start saving your money or at least what you have saved to prevent inflation and things like that and be able to make money with your money. Now, I'm going to go over uh, commercial real estate and other things as well. But as a holding house or a place where you can save money and make money off your money, I'm going to go over stocks and investing and how you're going to get into it. If you've never done any investing or don't have any stocks, there's two apps that you're going to want to get into. If you're very, very beginner and it's like your brand new thing that you've never done, the safest app out there would be an app on your phone that you look up is called Stash. And on Stash, you're going to be able to buy fractions of a stock. So if you wanted to buy like say Amazon or even Berkshire Hathaway, private stock or common I mean uh, premium stock at like 300,000 and you only have like say I don't know 100 bucks to play with you'd buy a fraction of it or a fraction of Amazon and that's that's the stash app um, now if you want to go to that would be saving your money you just put money in there and let let it gain interest over time and the whole key to making money in stocks is a long term because it does fluctuate daily so you have to have a a little bit of um, good temperament so to say because you can't freak out and sell it every time it drops a little bit but if you have that knowledge and the temperament and the motions then it's the best way to make money especially over long long term so your next best app which is really probably my favorite is uh, Robinhood Robinhood app is uh, it gives you the ability to buy any stock well most stocks that you want um, buy and sell it it doesn't really allow you to do day trading unless you have 25,000 or more but in the beginning you're not even going to want to do day trading and you probably don't want to spend all your time on that because it does take a learning curve but so I'm gonna go over Robinhood today and give you familiar familiar with that so you can pick up Robinhood and put some of your money in to Robin Hood so ideally this is going to be for learning how to make money in stocks and making the right decisions and getting familiar with what you want to get into now if you want to get into more as I get you more money and things I can show you more things but my model is once I get some maybe half a million dollars, I get them into bigger stuff that runs on autopilot and then you don't have to worry about things. But in the meantime, I can get you at levels that you want to get get to. All right, so we're going to go back to Robinhood. I've, I've, what, what you're looking at on the screen is like I have three levels of investing here and I'm going to go through all three just so you know where it's at and where you can do it, what you can do with this. Robinhood. You'll see, uh, I started this out at like 10,000 just to give an example of how to build up your file. Uh, today is like made 450,000. It's on 50,000 basically, big deal. Not a lot of money, but it gives you an idea. You can start out with 500 bucks, 100 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. The thing is, what you want to do is like, this is going to be basic information, especially if you're already an investor. You probably already know most of this, but what I'm going to show you is things to help you get started. Robinhood, you get signed up, you sign up your bank account, and you get in there, and you're going to put your money in, and it takes a couple days, and it's like similar step-by-step. Step. Um, it has a list of your stocks, like all over here. These are what I have, what I'm into for this account. It's not, um, it's not, it's not a lot, but it gives you an idea of what you're going to want to do. Uh, basically, if, if you're going to do this, you want to pick long-term stable companies with uh, less, uh, more of a lower price and higher competitive edge. Basically, so you're going to do the long-term stuff. So in order to do that, uh, say like Disney, that's one of your better buys. Uh, the, you're going just from standard point of view, 
from like a very beginner, uh, say dummies level investing, you're going to look at the charts. This is a one day chart, one week, one month, three months, one year, and a five year chart. Okay. So on Robinhood, you could go down and check the buy rating, hold, sell, research. Uh, if you pay for the extra premium, uh, it'll give you the research report. That's a three star. Um, earnings on stocks come out every quarter. So basically they're going to say your earnings, they're going to say, <laughs> they're going to tell you ahead of time uh, for the next month uh, we expect to make uh, X amount of dollars here. And then when the earnings come out, they do a phone call. You can log in and get the phone call or get the report. And then uh, all the shareholders are going to li listen to the report and it's going to say, hey, we came out above or below. So if they come out above, that's when the stocks are going to shoot up. If they come out below, stocks are going to drop. And so if you're doing a company that's solid and stable, like long term, perfect growth rate and everything like perfect growth rate is basically Disney because look, I mean, you got one year. I mean, one day. Well, OK, we're going to go back to five years, five years. Look at it. It basically five year goes from very low all the way almost I mean it's kind of linear I mean you don't see a big drop I mean it, there's no losses you want to see no loss no loss no loss maybe for the week but on a normal company if I had seen this on a different one and it had a loss I probably wouldn't get into it I'm also just saying um, these are what I do. This is not I'm not advising you and I'm not a stock advisor. I'm not a licensed broker. So just for that on the record, note that for legal purposes. But normally if you're going to buy a stock and it has a low, low drop in any of these periods, five, one, three, one month or one week, you're not going to buy it. Disney, you make an exception, is dropping because... Um, well, they just merged and bought Fox and did all these things. So the, the stock is, even compared to all the analysts, everybody agrees, most of them, for at least last week, that uh, it's the best one to get into. But as far as stability, you're going to want to pick this one. Now, what determines a good buy versus a, a, a bad buy is the value of the stock, the value of the company. So... Um, since this video is just a beginner's video and how to get you into stocks, I want you to go from the basic simples and start out just investing like maybe a hundred bucks and throw it around. Or, well, this is 130, but um, maybe, I don't know, you can get in cheaper stocks, but get, get familiar with the charts. So you're reading it. The chart says, okay, it looks good on the charts. That's called technicals. Technicals are all the numbers, the numbers of like the charge, the schematics, the up and down um, price earnings ratio is basically the ratio of how much price you're going to make on your stock per the earnings of the company. So different, different um, platforms give you different information. So this says the fair value is $130. Uh, they're calculating what what each stock price is really worth now if you want to get further developed in your investing you're going to look at um, different um, platforms or look at different information that's going to say which I'll give you a taste of what that would be uh, you're going to look here you want to make sure it's a good management st structure, who the manager is and how they run their firm to make sure that their margins of profit are strong and the management and everybody on the team has got the right culture, meaning that they hire within, they give everybody within a promotion. They're not building a company full of outsiders because outsiders are going to cause a lot of people that are inside animosity and it's going to cause them not to follow the core value core principle of the company and cause the company to fall apart over time. Bob Iger is like one of the best managers, even though the Disney Harris or whatever, she hates him because he's overpaid, but he should be overpaid because he's probably one of the smarter ones in the whole industry and he's built this company up to make it what it is and to pull off this new streaming online service and he's got all this together, Hulu and then the buying of 21st century and like all this and now he's just recently sold off uh, 
this small part of the sports aspect of it, but yet they, they're still producing that, and they're even going to be uh, doing uh, the UFC and things like that, the video on that, but uh, there's a lot of reasons why I like Disney. It's not my top best favorite, but for long term, it's one of my best favorites. Uh, so back to calculating the value when you want to get into a little more in-depth decisions. The reason, the, the purpose or how you're going to do that is basically you're going to look at, well, you want to make sure you're getting into a, a stock that has a good volume so you don't get stuck in it and can't get out of it. But that's more for later. But to, to decide about the whole overall value of the company, you're going to look at the market cap. You're going to see how much shares are outstanding. So you're going to take the market cap divided by the actual price. And that's going to give you so many hundred millions of dollars. So you're going to determine how many millions of dollars that is. Once you look at that, I'm going to show you here um, some numbers so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me pull this up. Uh, to determine the fair value of the stock. This is how you're going to do that. We're going to go to Disney. Okay, so basically Disney is, um, it's got, you're going to, you're going to find out the market cap. Okay, so once you get the market cap, it is say $201 billion. This is basically how many shares are outstanding. You're going to take that and you're going to multiply it by the actual share of the stock the stock but first of all you want to you want to find out the income what's the net income on Disney for the year and you're gonna look that up you can look that up on basically anywhere on the internet you're gonna take um, that number which is 12 billion it's a net income for 2018 so the price per share is a hundred and thirty dollars basically 134 times 100, 100, 130 times, okay, so the price per share times the market cap, you're talking like 130 times 195 billion divided by market shares leaves you with one and a half trillion outstanding shares. Okay, so if you take the net income times five years, that's $60 billion divided by the outstanding shares. So the price of this company, you're gonna pay for the company, you're gonna buy Disney at what the net profit is times five years. That's what you usually buy a company for is what they are worth for five years. So if if Disney makes 12 billion a year, you're gonna buy it five times 12 billion, which is $60 billion, okay? So $60 billion, so how much is $60 billion divided by the shares that are outstanding right now that'd be uh there's 1.5 trillion shares outstanding puts it at 40 dollars a share so it's basically overvalued by 90 dollars now that that's that's warren buffett's method of determining pretty much that's exact formula that he does well as far as formulas go on buying buying a company so a company is all relative to what you pay for it per share if it's at the right price at the right time you're gonna buy it and you're gonna buy heavy now that's the the formula that's a technical that's a fundamentals analysis a fundamental is basically the numbers the income statement the balance statement the margin profit and loss those are called fundamentals these are the fundamentals. The fundamentals say it's overpriced by 90 bucks. That's my formula basically based off of what Buffett does. Nobody out there has actually, well, they don't put it down and no one's going to tell you, oh, this is a formula that Buffett does because they don't really, I don't think they've ever just really determined exactly what his formula is, but uh no one's going to tell you that, but the point is, that's a formula. If you're actually wanting to get into this in the, the longer term, you're going to take out what 
which ones you pick for the formula. But there's other aspects you look at. I look at other aspects of Disney because there's so many other factors of it and they control so much. They have so many revenue streams. They got Star Wars, they got Avengers, they got all these other things and they got Mickey Mouse. He's been around for, you know, 100 years. So that's the reason. So undervalued, that's fine. Now you look at Amazon, you do the same thing. The numbers come up with Amazon is undervalued by 400 bucks. That's a slam dunk buy according to the formula. So, um, look at Amazon. I mean, if you want to get Amazon on the numbers, we're talking, uh, it's really valued at like two, I got it valued at like, well, I did this about a week ago. It was at 1843. Now it's already up <laughs> 1958, but I had valued at like 200 two thousand four hundred dollars a share so it definitely buying it would be worth buying it hold on one second back to Amazon Amazon is valued at like twenty two hundred dollars now I'm telling you how to develop your investing style a little more in depth than normal so uh, like like I was saying again you're gonna look down here the market cap ratio you're going to go to uh, like your research and say okay how do I know what since it's all public records you're just gonna go what Amazon Amazon net income for 2018 230 billion dollars for 2018 so that is the net income annual revenue for 2018 is 230 billion so basically income of 232 234 billion times five puts it at a price of 1.1 trillion dollars okay now you divide that by the shares that are outstanding which is 450 million that gives you the fair value price of the stock is 2400 dollars it's undervalued by 400 bucks when when you're when you're trying to develop your skills you're going to constantly be trying to learn how to make money make money make money all day long you're going to put your mind on it and you're going to focus on your business the first thing is you're going to get your side business or your business that you own right now working where you have better margins you have more clients you have more money coming in and i'm not talking like this funding stuff or whatever i do i do this for the bigger picture because I have clients and other things and I make lots of money for the clients and lots of money for me. The way to make a lot of money is start a business that has value like a service, a product or whatever or something like that. And I'll do a whole video on what's hot right now to get into. I just don't like sharing all this information with my competition because they're so incredibly ignorant and it just drives me nuts and they bug me all day long pretending they're clients when they're not and then they hang up when I tell them the truth or when they want to move forward and they just waste my time so back to this video so that's how you invest on a, a higher level of what you decide of what you want to get into and what's what price of a stock is worth what price that's what Buffett does he buys a company on paper he says well what's each individual piece of stock worth now you have to do your own thinking you can't go off of what the people say other people say you have to determine what stock is worth what to you because uh, most of your analysts Jim Jim Cramer and all these other people they're good for education on certain things if you're a beginner but they're bad in a way because it, a lot of it is missing information and it's not the key information so just to get familiar with what you're doing start out with the robin hood app get in with a hundred bucks go off the charts that will help you for one for the technicals of getting the technicals but what what makes a solid investment is a company that's had long-term growth and it's never had a loss and it keeps has a great management team it's got the competitive edge and it's at the right price now as I just showed you how to get the right price 
is basically taking the market cap divided by the shares to find out how many outstanding shares there are and then go and looking up uh, doing your research and find out what the net income of the company is and the net income of the company is for that year multiply it by five years because that's the price of anything basically on a business you're gonna pay five years worth of profits to buy any normal business which that's a whole nother video I'll get into about buying businesses and selling them and how to change those and modify them and to make a lot of money but same thing for stocks you're going to find out the price of the, the company. Then you find out it's five years out. That's the price. You're going to break it down to what, what it is per stock. And then you're going to say which one's great. Now, Disney, I bought it. Like I said, it's um, overvalued by 90 bucks. But it has so many other aspects that aren't on the numbers. The Mickey Mouse, the competitive edge, and the things, the Disney name alone, you cannot replace that. That, that feature itself is intangible that is a not going to show up on your income statement that alone the number i mean the uh competitive edge with all the copyright and the patenting and all these things that aren't on the paper is worth billions of dollars so that's why i'm buying it even though it's undervalued but it'll still go up even if the stock markets decline or drop it'll it'll it's always succeeded in the last I don't know how many many years. I mean, like, well, hundred years. Um, which brings me to uh, you want to look at the history. I'll show you over. I mean, like the twenty years on Disney. You're looking at. Uh, this is a, another account I have. It's a smaller one because I'm doing options and things like that. Uh, this one, uh, I would say stay away from my options because uh, it's a good way to lose your ass. But um, here's a 20 year chart uh, from 2000 all the way up to 2019. The only year it ever really dropped is not even really a drop is a 2009. So, I mean, you're safe. I mean, Uh, this is a TD Ameritrade. It's a good platform. Uh, it has a list of their earnings. You could go look up that. Uh, the fundamentals, that's all the numbers, like your income statements, balance sheet, um, profit and loss, all that kind of stuff. The calendar, uh, other analyst reports, peer comparisons, the SEC filings. Uh, this is really key. Once you get into things uh, like I'm talking about and you develop your knowledge base a little better, <laughs> another trick is like is it a good buy or not well let's find out the reason why you want to find out uh, is called insider trading insider trading uh, there's two types of insider trading insider trading one that's illegal that you know somebody in the firm and they come outside and they tell you like Wall Street the movie they say hey uh, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna buy XYZ company tomorrow so put all your money in this that's and that's like what Martha Stewart got in trouble for but then there's legal insider trading and that means insider trading on the legal aspect is registered with the SEC because they regulate all this um, and that was with all the uh, people that got into the IPO or into the company prior to going public these are called insiders in order to go public you have to have 25 minimum shareholders and of those 25 minimum shareholders normally if it's a big corporation you can have you know thousands and you know thousands of people more or some heavy hitters and get hundreds so those there's going to be ranged from the ceo the president and all the other investors those investors are called insiders they have to register with the sec anytime they sell stock buy stock or buy another company so in order if you want to find out on a heavier level if it's a great company you're going to find uh you're going to look at the inside trading and then you to see which companies buy more of their own stock which means to you that they are confident and know their company is going to go up for one reason or another the reason um 
also is if they're going to buy other companies. This here is stating uh, basically they merged with Fox and they're buying Fox. Uh, this TD Ameritrade does list this. Um, insider trading, it, it'll list the buy and the sell. On this one, um, this is all talking about it's moving into the purchase of stock in the com com combining or merging with 21st century Fox and all that kind of stuff if you look it up in general and just say insider buys or sells on the internet uh, it's easier to read than this this one you have to get into the technicals and the very the technical details on the bottom and know how to read one of these charts but I like it because it's all here and I already know how to read these but if you were doing it and you say hey I want to buy uh, some stock and you could say inside trade so it would say uh, okay say Disney just for the example inside trading it's easier to read uh, yeah this one's really easy inside trades uh, I'll just give you an example Insider trades. Uh, this lists your top insider trades. Now we want to go to Disney. A good way to, if you're getting a little better into uh, stocks, you're going to go to the insider trades. Um, websites you're gonna look at who's doing the top insider trades and see who's buying the most of their own company and then you're like oh man that one's hot I'm gonna buy this one that one but you don't need to do all this to get into stocks I'm just saying what's out there for you a little further on when you get more developed in it stocks to me is just something you put on the side for long term as a holding place as a savings account like your business um, I have a larger account, which I have a lot of long-term ones, and I'm going to show you this, uh, that I've had for quite a while, several years. I don't really mess with this. I just pick stocks that are great for long-term, and I let it set. Now, the Robinhood level, which I've built up, is... something easy you could get into and understand and go over it as far as um, you set up your account and now I'm gonna go back to the basics okay this this is all the stocks that you're gonna own it's gonna put them over here um, how, how these work is like say say you like like a stock we'll just go back to Disney for example you find it you look at the charts okay the charts look good you might say well, the ratio is, says 75% buy, 25% hold. So people say it's good. Analysts say it's good. So that's good. But I wouldn't go off it all the time. What you might want to check first is uh, volatility on this thing. If it's this one's uh, medium. Normally, sometimes it's low. So that's pretty good. The new IPOs uh, like Beyond Beyond Meat. See this one has got a high volatility. Well, it doesn't say it, but it is. But the point is, um, if you stick with something that's low volatility and strong, um, your money's going to average out to more money. I mean, I'm just going to go over some key stocks that I have that are actually kick-ass and make a lot of money the I mean super hot stock right now is like shop Shopify it's on Facebook Amazon and it is the key selling stock for all your marijuana stocks they're selling selling through Shopify but they do have a lot of competition and it isn't like more than five years old but uh, you'll look at the five-year returns is like 840 percent right here that's huge one year returns average is like 110%, where a normal stock is like on 
just plain Jane is like 20%. So to me, that's hot. And it makes a lot of money. I only have like 7,000 in it. But, but if you diversify your money, you don't have to do 7,000 or you don't have to do millions. It doesn't matter. It's just you. The whole thing about business is taking the knowledge you know and running with it and doing all you can with what you can, finding solutions to problems and moving forward with your money every day. Like even on this stock, um, just for example, yesterday, um, I had my money in Yeti, uh, Yeti coolers because they're going global and everything. And the only other thing is, on the paper and the numbers, everything looked great. They did an earning call, and the guys on the earning call even said they did better than the estimated earnings. But the way they handled the call sounded like they're reading a script, and they sound like freaking idiots. So the stock dropped, and I lost twenty five hundred bucks. I don't really care. I mean, it's just that stock and it was a high risk stock and I knew it to begin with uh, so I pulled out because I got a piss and I'm like oh oh well I'm gonna sell this shit it dropped well had I stayed in it maybe a week or two it'd come back up and the money would have gone up but it's just for ex sake of the experiment uh, another hot stock also is um, well not Wix I mean it's it's got cap capability and it could be over time, but uh, another hot stock actually, well, Beyond Meat is pretty good for an IPO, but IPOs are not safe because the first couple weeks you're going to have a lot of shakeout and people, it's going to go all the, over the place, up and down. So I would not do IPOs till later on once you once you have more familiar, familiarity with what you're doing. I like Beyond Meat because, well, it's... Um, veganistic food and all this stuff and you've got bill gates a lot of famous athletes and players behind it and all this stuff and it's the very first vegan ipo on the market so to me it's pretty good and it may turn out to be worth a lot of money but you have tyson chicken and other companies that are going to come behind it but this is the first one and it seems to be have the best products so that's why that's a good one to me. The next one, uh, which is a really hot stock, actually, is Trade Desk. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently <laughs> sold my position on this, but when I first got into it, it was like around 200 bucks. Now it's up to 230. It took a drop. Uh, well, was this earlier today? Yeah, today. And this is the problem with stocks. If you're overly into, <laughs> I'd like to say, well, about eight thousand bucks in this thing, and it went from two twenty seven to two twenty four, and I draw, I sold it because uh, I thought, well, this is day trading. I cannot do day trading. I don't do day trading because it never works out because you get too emotional, and if you pay too much attention to the crap, you end up selling the money. And had I left it in there, it would have been back up to two thirty one. Um, it's same with Disney. I, I mean, I got into Disney at like 200 bucks, and like just uh, when they announced the the buyout or whatever, it dropped, jumped up uh, 30 bucks in a day. And for example, just like Chipotle, yes, no, was it two days ago? It went from 200 bucks to 550 dollars in one day. I mean, the thing is, with these stocks, I'm saying do the long term. You find the good ones. Um, I'm just dabbling it at some stuff that's short term and day trading, even though because I know I've got my long term picks, which I just picked them in. I put a ton of money in them. And I left them set. I haven't even looked at them. I didn't look at them for like years. I mean, and then when I go back and it's, you know, I've made millions of dollars on it. But my key key money is in real estate, apartments, hotels and things like that. That's where I could pull out a million bucks at a time or more and just strategically make it and do those things. But but if you're saving money to do other things and you have money in the bank, which you should, I suggest that you get on Robinhood or Stash if you really want to be simple autopilot. But Robinhood, you have a little bit more control. But if you get into um, your stocks in Robinhood, you're going to buy, buy and sell like the key ones that 
are important. You have like your key stocks would be like Disney, Amazon, Walmart, Microsoft, Apple in general. They're not good so hot at the moment, but they'll pick back up in a week or two. Um, you got Coca-Cola. You got, if you want to do the same thing Buffett does, you would have JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Amex, the financials, and he likes Disney as well, and he likes Apple. But you'd pick the long-term companies with competitive edge, and basically it's called a moat around it that other companies can't touch. It's a company that constantly evolves. Facebook's a good one. Creates managers because they hire within, and the managers, once they get once they're retired, they are into training the ones below them and fulfill them with the new managers. But the outside companies that have problems and are collapsing are the ones that hire outside managers. And then when that key manager has ran the whole company for five or ten years and that person quits, there's no one to replace them. And then the whole company collapses and you're screwed. Um, that's kind of happening with uh, Teva Pharmaceutical. Teva Pharmaceutical is like the largest pharmaceutical company generic pharmaceutical co company in the country in the world uh warren buffett has tons of money in it he probably bought in it around 12 14 dollars a share right now it's at like four, uh, 14 bucks but they're getting sued all over the place because um well they lost their patent for one thing on a couple key drugs so that was a problem uh, the competition kind of stepped on them and now they're getting kind of some lawsuits from uh, backing some different opioid, op opioid, opioid drugs that were kind of abused so like Texas and other places are suing them so their stock is super dirt cheap uh, it's like way below so that's a long term play you got your semiconductors uh, which is Qualcomm uh, Broadcom and all these other things that are good buys, but you pick what you like. Um, Pinterest is out. That's a good one. Its profitability isn't super high, but it's a good one to get into if you're into IPOs. Uh, but it hasn't really showed a profit yet, so I don't think I would be buying it yet. You'd want to get a company that has a profit. Okay, so now the basics of, I'm sorry this video is long. I just want to get you familiar with it and educate you and get your mind on where you should put your spare money as well as you get your other businesses set up and your your money on the right track I know just some clients that asked me about things like this so I'm gonna go over this video I'm gonna do a business buying video and then I'm gonna do one on real estate but I don't know I'll probably keep those other ones private because on the commercial real estate I'm gonna tell everybody how to get into like 100% profit 100% LTV purchases, which I can almost say for a fact, uh, there's probably nobody on the internet that even, well, they're definitely not telling you this information. I guarantee you that, especially the 100 LTV. You might see some other copycat companies advertising it, but they don't know shit, and they don't know how to get their clients from here to here to anywhere and I guarantee when I when I do the video for the commercial real estate uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you everything like that's not out there and I see people selling this information on Facebook and there's one on there just last week about how he uh, you could pay to get in commercial real estate and all this stuff and this guy didn't know shit I mean I don't even believe it I can't believe how stupid people sell stuff for but anyways they don't even have money so they can't tell you how to do things because they don't even know how to do it themselves they're just talking out their side of their mouth okay so back to robin hood robin hood okay once you get in you get signed up with your bank account stuff you prove your id boom you're ready to go okay so so you find a stock you like okay we'll say honey honeywell is a pretty good one uh look at the look at the charts just the basics you might pick ones uh companies you like because uh as a consumer you're going to probably be pretty smart compared to like a stock trader in general because like if you go to a certain store like you like uh, 
a certain brand maybe you, you notice it's better than the other brands as a consumer and you say hey i may like nike or i may like adidas is adidas is doing really great because they make better quality clothes or they make a better shoe or something in that aspect so you may stick with the stocks you like and you know and just see how that is trending in the stores and that's kind of a good reference so then it, you do that you pick them the whole trick to the stock market is picking your stocks but i have a strategy on this scenario my big accounts where i have like the millions of dollars i have like maybe only eight key companies that are going to be around and make tons of money for the next 10 20 years and they are hot and i just have money in there i leave it and i don't even touch it i don't barely look at it i only look at it because i show clients here i have money just to prove prove crap i don't really try to prove that i'm smarter or better than anybody i'm just trying to prove that i know what i'm doing and i know how to make money i know how to make clients money so now that we've gone over all the general generalities on how to pick what stocks here's how to actually buy them so on robin hood you have your key information um price earnings ratio you can learn that later um while i'm well more, let me go over the price earnings ratios this is a 20 19 percent that means it's forward earnings of 19 times the amount of the price of the stock so it basically says if you buy stock you can make 19 bucks on it on average that's what it's saying per year okay so that seems pretty good now when under when a company is undervalued you want to have that price earnings ratio lower because that means that means the stock is probably undervalued the higher it goes the closer to the real value it might be the dividends you're going to look at um is two dollars and 31 cents per share that means you get paid two dollars 31 cents for every stock you own every three months so that's good the smarter you get and the more you learn you're gonna really learn how to understand these better but i'm gonna try and get you familiar with the, what this is now just so it's in your mind so some companies some stocks have dividend dividends of zero hey let me give you a call right back which means that the value of the stock is better and stronger because they're not paying out dividends which means your your price of your stock can go up faster and higher because they don't have to pay out dividends like berkshire hathaway doesn't pay dividends and it's like a three hundred thousand dollar stock and it's the best one that's been around for years so that's just information you can pick up on and learn more as you go for the sake of the argument volume you want to get in something that's at least a million that way you're not stuck in the stock forever but if you're picking key stocks that are long-term goals and long-term buys they're good to buy good get okay so if you want to buy stock you're going to put in say 10 shares that's uh, 1700 bucks at the market price of 173 so then you're going to put push the order button you're going to submit and buy okay that's how you do it simple um a market price means that if you buy it and the volume's high and it goes up to or goes down it's going to go on that price that goes down so the safest way to do a buy is called a limit order a limit order is the exact price you're only going to pay what price you put in that number so by picking the limit price you could say i want to buy it at so if i was buying this stock today i would say for the week uh, the low for the week is uh 169 dollars the low for the day is 171 so i would say if i really want the stock i'll say since it's trending up i would get a price it's probably where it's going to pop that back down because it never goes linear or never goes in a straight line i would say i want to buy this price it depends how bad i want the stock if i want this stock just on in my portfolio on average i would say a good buy it's gonna probably pop down back around i don't know once 72. so i'd say i want to buy it for 173. let's see i'd buy it say say for 172 bucks and uh put in the order put in limit order 
at $172, however many shares you want, good for the day, and boom, it's good. So whenever it drops down to $172, it'll make the sale, and boom, you got the stock. That's because I want the stock for a long term. If you just want it for like a year, not maybe a super long time, if you would probably say, I want a limit order of like, so if you're day trading, you'd say, I want a limit, limit order of... Uh, I don't know, you'd wait till it drops, till it's lower, and then you'd sell on the high. So, so you'd say you'd go ahead and put in limit order one seventy two, or you would, and then you'd go ahead and put in right after that. You put in the sell at. You can do a limit order on sell. At say, one seventy three or whatever. So basically, it's simple. You buy it. You want to buy it on limit order. And the limit order is the price you put it in there, and that's the that's the buy at the price you want. Now you could do a limit stop loss order. Um, um, I'll save that for later, so I don't want to confuse you. But so you buy the stock and you want to sell. So if you buy it now, you want to get out of it later. You would just sell the stock at whatever price you want so you bought it at say you buy it at 172 and you and then you, later on say a minute later you want to sell it like whatever week day later you'd say 175 put in the sell and whenever it hits that amount it'll sell for you take a hundred bucks and um just mess with it the market buy goes with with the market price there's called a stop loss which uh, you would put on all your stocks if you want to protect them in your trading later. In every stock, you'd say uh, it's an automatic sell for the minute it drops. So, this one, uh, I just have a bunch of examples here. I only own like 10 shares. Um, these are. These are all long-term stocks for me, and I have all my money in my big portfolio, but this is just to get you an idea of how to invest. Um, say you didn't like this, you would just say sell at market price. You want to get rid of it. If you did a market price on a highly volatile stock, it, it you'd probably end up, you're not going to control the price, so you'd go ahead and sell it on a limit. So that's your buy and sell. You want to look at your overall portfolio where you are. These are your numbers for the, the week. It's kind of slow. The month, the day, all that kind of stuff. That just tells you all your stocks. Now, over here, a real easy way to see where you're, you're going at, where, you're, where your stocks are for the day is uh, what percent change. So... If you're doing long-term stuff you probably don't want to, you're not going to spend all day jacking with this but when you get further into it you might say okay well who's dropping today okay you might say well I don't know which one's down so you pick whichever one's down then you go ahead and sell it but but you want to get long-term deals and just save your money and overall this is going to beat the standard s p if you get the right ones and you're going to make more money than having your money in savings that's the real key These are your top movers uh who's good and who's bad so you might want to pick the ones out of here that are good a lot of them aren't like your long-term companies are going to be the ones that are stable for long term because these are too volatile so you probably don't want to get into these but uh, look up the robin hood app or the stash app and then try try mess with some things with your money and see what you can do and go from there so that's just a basic overview hopefully that helps you and gets things going with your savings Okay, so just to recap things, um, you're going to want to put your money in long-term accounts that are stable, strong companies, so, sort of like what Buffett does. You're going to check the charts, the five, the one, the, the five-year, the one-year, the three-month, one month, one week, and the one day. Make sure they're all strong profits going up in a 45-degree angle, basically. You're going to diversify your stocks a little bit into, I don't know, 
several of these instead of putting all your money in one thing. I know Disney's a really great one. If you're interested in some other good ones, um, you might want to look at as well that are moving well is, of course, Amazon, Microsoft, Walmart, Shopify's hot because um, all the pot stocks are going through there. And um, Trade Desk is really hot because it's an um, online advertising marketing thing that's taking advantage of like all the sites and it's moving really well. Shopify and Trade Desk are currently pretty new IPOs. I think they're less than five years old, so you would have to watch it and keep your eye on those. Um, then you got your semiconductors like Broadcom, Qualcomm, Intel, NVIDIA, those things. That they're a little more risk, but this long term thing, so you diversify. So you'd put your put your main eggs in like things like the long term strong companies like Disney, Amazon, Microsoft, maybe Apple, uh, that type of stuff. You might want to pot pot stocks in general are a little um volatile but i mean maybe put a little bit of money in that um paypal and square aren't bad you got to realize um all these stocks are gonna fluctuate they probably go up three or four days and down one but uh you could play day trading and sell it off every time it drops but by the time you what i realize is uh if you do that it bounces right back up anyway so you might as well just not touch it the long-term game is where it's at the big money so you put just some of your money in it mess with it play with it and just look at it maybe like once a week don't get obsessed with it and just learn it and educate yourself as you as you go you could look at the information of like uh, the people that are recommending the buys um, the price earnings ratio does help a little bit but overall, it's the value of the company, the, the bigger competitive edge or monopoly or size they have on against competition and things like that. The next video, I'm going to go over how to calculate the actual value and the more details about that. But this gives you an idea of what's going on and maybe I'll get you started on that aspect. It's just uh, this is like the third phase just for your savings. Um, I'm going to do a video on like how to get into commercial real estate at 100 percent and how to buy and sell businesses which will be a little better this this would be really after those two but i just thought i'd put this up here because <coughs> you can start out with such a small amount uh also uh well coca-cola is so solid as well zynga is pretty hot it's like um all the uh, mobile app games is pretty good <coughs> and another good ipo is uh, beyond meat that just came out because uh that's all vegetarian and it's got bill gates and other athletes behind it, and other famous people like athletes and stuff so look at those is pretty good all right so i hope this helps if you need funding or get your credit repair give us a call love to help you out uh 312-473-4163 bye